Greetings, everyone. It's Closer Look Time again here on the Multimedia Chronicles. Got kind of a special one for you today. Rather than just taking a look at one DVD set or one, you know, whatever, uh, we're going to be looking at a variety of stuff in a variety of formats. This really is the Multimedia Chronicles incarnate in this episode because we'll be looking at multiple forms of media that represent this particular franchise. Ah, uh, which one should I show you in the intro here? Well, I'll show you this one, actually. So, um, so last time we actually talked about a Region 2 set, namely the Tripods. Well, this time we'll be talking about another Region 2 set, specifically the Inhumanoids, the evil that lies within, which was a short-lived cartoon that uh, started on Super Sunday or Super Saturday, depending which area of the world you lived in or, or which... Uh, uh, which version the station was showing. Uh, it originally started as a five, or no, sorry, as a 15-part miniseries on uh, Super Sunday, Super Saturday, um, and then later got spun off into its own series the following year. Um, and now I say, you may be thinking, 15 parts, my God, that's huge. But, uh, okay, you got to understand, with Super Sunday, Super Saturday, they, it was a half-hour show, and they would show seven-minute segments of three different ongoing shows. Gem and the Holograms got their start there. Um, and was definitely the most successful of all the shows that appeared there. There was a 15-part series of robotics, and there was, I think, a 10-part series of Bigfoot and the Muscle Machines. That was done as a shorter one for some reason. Uh, now, later, a lot of those miniseries were compiled together because basically three seven-minute segments equals one half-hour episode. So they were edited together into five-part presentations. Um, yeah, so when Inhumanoids got its own series the following year, the 15-part miniseries was cut down into a five-part miniseries. I mean, nothing was missing. It's just, instead of being three different shows, it was just three parts of the Inhumanoids uh, making up that one half hour. Um, yeah, so they did that, and then they did eight new episodes. So if you're going by the half-hour format, there was 13 episodes total. Uh, in the case of Gem... They had the original 15-part miniseries re-edited into a five-part miniseries, and then they did 60 more episodes. It was just a huge, huge successful series uh, spread out over several seasons as well. So uh, great stuff. So one might say The Inhumanoids was the second most successful uh, series to be spun off from the Super Sunday, Super Saturday uh, cliffhanger serial format. Um, but it didn't last beyond that one season with its eight new episodes. But what was there? Damn, it was good. It was such a good show. Um, you know, I, I could talk about it at great length, and maybe I will over the course of this Closer Look video. But, okay, we're not just going to talk about the show. We're not just going to talk about the, sadly, UK-only DVD release. There was a US release, a Region 1 release. Uh, there was two volumes put out by Rhino Video containing the first nine episodes. They were really stretching it out. They never released the last four episodes. So the only way to get the complete series in full was this DVD release. In fact, this is the only time ever that the complete series has been released anywhere in the world. The last four episodes, this is the only way you can get them officially. And sadly, this set is out of print now, but I'll include an Amazon link in the description anyway, just in case it shows up for some unreasonable price from a third-party seller. But yeah, so we're not just going to talk about the DVD set. We're going to talk about the original 80s VHS releases as well, of which I have all of them. We're also going to talk about the short-lived comic book series, which uh, Marvel put out. We're also going to talk about some of the spin-offs. So there wasn't a ton of merchandise, but we did get a couple of storybooks. We got a coloring book. We got a coloring and activity book and a paint with water book. So the Inhumanoids, the evil that lies within, that's what we're going to talk about today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Well, we got a lot of stuff to cover. This might be a long one. Hope you enjoy. Let's head on down to the black box and check out all this pile of Inhumanoid stuff. And I'll talk a little bit about the show and, and story and whatnot while we do that, too. Okay, so I guess uh, we'll go chronologically through the video releases here first off. So, first up we have the Inhumanoids, the evil that lies within VHS release 
from High Tops video. This came out, I believe, in uh, 1980. Oh, 1986. Actually, it was the same year as the uh, regular series, actually. So, yeah, so pretty cool. So, this is basically the original five part or 15 part uh, mini series. Uh, edited together into a movie. Now this is done in much the way that most um, movie compilations of miniseries were done at the time. Namely, they uh, they cut out the recaps, they cut out the title, opening, closing titles between episodes, things like that. So it just all plays as one continuous uh, movie. I remember Family Home Entertainment was particularly hyperactive with their editing, and they would cut out fades to commercial and stuff as well. So there were all these, always these awkward cuts. So it just kind of folds out uh, of the bottom here. And we slide it out, and there we go. Good old VHS, and it even has the. Uh, sticker on the side. And it is a T90, which basically means in the SP format, you would get 90 minutes of running time. So they tended to do that. They had, uh, th there were certain like running times of tapes that you could buy in the stores. And then um, they had, uh, I, I know, oh, X rental, as you can tell. <laughs> um, and they, um, but, but the ones that I noticed that uh, a, a lot of tapes that you would buy would be different times that generally weren't as widely available in the stores. Uh, and the reason for that, of course, being they want to have, obviously, the presentation in SP mode. That's uh, short play because it's the faster tape speed, and faster tape speed means better quality. So you get, in, in particular, in terms of the picture quality, the sound was almost always high fidelity, so you would get basically the same quality sound regardless of what speed it was recorded in. Um, but then the... Um, the picture quality is really where there would be the big difference. And High Tops was actually a really good label. They did a lot of shows that uh, I liked. They did a complete... They actually did all 13 episodes of Visionaries, Knights of the Magical Light. I used to have that set. kind of wish I still did, just for collector's item purposes. So, here we go. So, this is Volume 2, uh, The Earth's Darkest Hour, which is not the title of any episode. This contains the ep uh, episodes... One and four of the regular season, or I guess episodes uh, six and six, seven, eight, nine, six and nine. Sorry, I just had to figure it out. Um, specifically, cipheroid and negative polarity. So it's kind of strange that they would have two episodes that aren't consecutive because it's a continuing story. And so I don't know why they did that. So this was actually the first volume that I bought. Um, there was a store in see now this is a, this is another example so this is a t45 so just barely enough tape for the two episodes that are on here and you notice the bigger spools as well oh and uh oh no it's rewound yeah sorry i was looking at it wrong so as you can see it says quite clearly volume two um <coughs> so yeah there was a store uh in thornhill ontario where i lived that, uh, you know, I was pretty friendly with the... There was a couple of stores, actually, where I was pretty friendly with the owners. And uh, this was before the days, really, of mail order catalogs for things like this, and certainly before the days of the Internet. So if I wanted to get titles like this, which were not generally available in stores, I had to special order them. So I would actually order them from these video stores, and they would bring them in for me. And then this is Volume 3. This is the last volume that High Tops put out. And this contains Episodes 7 and 8, The Surma Plan and Cult of Darkness. So between these two, <laughs> you have the first four regular episodes of the series um, in beautiful SP VHS quality. So there you go. And this one, they, they did this sort of weird purple lines uh, design to it and clearly marked it Volume 3. It's the only one of the three volumes that actually clearly marks a volume number. And then, here we go. Very cool. Hold on a second. Oh, yeah. No, so I was just... See, the, the all the words are backwards on my display. It's kind of annoying. So, there you go. Very nice. I really like the package art on these. Like They, they, they used uh, th these beautiful painted covers. Just fantastic. Really, really like them a lot. And... Uh, and if we take a look here, same thing again. We have another, uh, is this a T4? No, this is a T60, actually, a T60. So, you know, I mean, every little bit of tape that they could save by using these custom running times for the amount of content that was on them 
you know, that's that's dollars saved for each release. And then again, we have we have this. Uh, so I was mentioning High Tops Video. They did a lot of uh, stuff back in the day. They were kind of the one of the go-to indie labels for uh, '80s cartoon aficionados. So they did Inhumanoids. They did all 13 episodes of uh, Visionaries, spread across seven volumes, might I add. They really milked that one for all it was worth. Um, I kept hoping they'd do a volumes four and five of Inhumanoids to finish it off, but they never did. So just to give you a look here, this is the complete High Tops Video VHS collection. Very nice, very nice indeed. Love those covers. And if you're wondering how it all looks kind of put together, it actually... Uh, you know, it, it lines up fairly well. Um, it, it's it's like each one used a slightly different sized uh, uh, spine picture, and it is kind of weird that this one has the purple line motif and the others are just black. I think just the plain black background looks a lot better. But uh, so there you go. Um, what else did High Tops do? They did uh, Gem. They did uh, oh, and they did Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future. That was kind of my introduction to the label. Sorry, some dust on this one here. Um, they did uh, 11 of the 22 episodes of Captain Power uh, spread across seven volumes. Or no, six. Six volumes. So a few years later, Mallow Film, uh, Mallow Film Comics Group. Well, that's actually not. Uh, Mallow Film did a whole bunch of different... This is a Canadian label. And they did a whole bunch of different uh, releases over the years. Of uh, They did a lot of volumes of Transformers and Beast Wars. They did Inhumanoids. Um, I don't know, just a bunch of... I think they did a couple volumes of Conan the Adventurer. A uh, whole bunch of stuff like that. So they were a pretty cool label here in Canada. Um, and I was interested in it because, uh, you know, for example... My uh, my edition of Volume 1 of Inhumanoids... I mean, first off, this is kind of edited down more than I would like. I don't mind if you cut out the opening and closing titles, but don't cut the show. This one is uncut. This one is... It cuts out the opening and closing titles, presents it as a movie again, but the content is actually uncut. And it's, uh, you know, very nice. I mean, look at that spine. That's freaking awesome. Beautiful. So, we open this up here. There we go. So now this, this we're getting into the later era of VHS, so they do these heat, uh, you know, ink labels, very, very classy. And, uh, and this is a, this is a T105. So 105 minutes. You can see there's like some really weird times. There's others like a T, I've seen T75s and, uh, you know, there's T30s and there's even a T15. So if something's really short, you can put it on a T15. So there you go. So, I should tell you, the basic plot of Inhumanoids is, I, I've always referred to it as Cthulhu for kids, because that's essentially what it is. Uh, basically, you have these three ancient creatures, Decompose, Tendril, and their leader, Metlar. Each one kind of represents a different uh, elemental force, and they are all pure evil and indestructible. They're basically like the old gods. Uh, they've been confined for many, many years. Uh, there are other creatures living... Uh, deep below the earth that sort of guard them and keep them prisoner. There's the mutors, which are made of rocks. Or, sorry, the um, the granites, which are made of rocks. The mutors is the species that they're a part of. And then there's the redwoods, which are the trees, which sort of uh, are guardians of the surface. And then there's Magnacor, which is, uh, there's the positive side and the negative side. It's, it's two beings that join together into one. Uh, one positive, one negative, and they are basically the force of magnetism. And they keep Metlar um, at bay. The granites keep Tendril at bay, and the redwoods keep um, Decompose at bay. So basically the three uh, Inhumanoids, uh, at, at the time that the story takes place, they've been set free, and it's up to the Earth Corps, which is a team of geologists, to basically save us all from them. <laughs> so this, of course, is the Region 2 DVD set, and... Um, Pretty cool. So we've got the original miniseries on here. There's there's a little bit of extras. They have one of the original toy commercials, and that's it. And then here we've got episodes 6 through 13. At long last, the final four episodes available in some kind of home video format, which is great. Uh, in particular, because the final... This is one of the things that really set Inhumanoids apart, actually, was some of the violence... There's some material, there's some stuff that happens in the last four episodes that are pretty gruesome. Pretty gruesome stuff, man. 
So we'll just take a quick look here at the uh, at the comics. I of course do have them bagged and backed. So we'll just uh, having to pull way back here. So we'll just take a quick peek. Uh, basically, the comics were adapting the original miniseries, and then I assume once that had finished, they were going to either continue adapting the show, or uh, as you can see, I mean this this was from the era where they were experimenting with new printing techniques. So you had this really uh, bright color and such that was just uh, amazing. Move the light over a little bit. There we go. Oh, get out of the shadows. Holy moly. And uh, see, so there's Tendril. Now this this issue uh, basically just covers the first, uh, like the first, almost like the first seven minute segment of the uh, the original 15 part miniseries. So it's quite... Um, Oh, look. Remember Saturday morning cartoons? Yeah, there you go. I should uh, take a scan of that, actually. That's pretty uh, pretty nice quality. And uh, there you go. So you see Tendril just... So anyway, basically, um, it, the, the thing that's... Um, a few things that set it apart were that uh, it was a continuing story, which is something you didn't see very often, and also just some of the content. Like, I remember, for example, with uh, the G.I. Joe cartoon, one of the things my friends and I always... I won't bother taking the others out just give you a quick look at them here. I remember one of the things my friends and I always uh, took note of was the fact that whenever Cobra's planes were shot down, the pilots would always manage to eject at the last second and parachute to safety. Well, there's a scene in the Inhumanoids where there is a... Uh, th there's more than just the main three Inhumanoids. There's a few others that are introduced later in the series, uh, specifically the gag oil, which is this... Um, basically cyclopean thing that just kind of stomps around it's it's really dumb and it just eats anything in sight um this was the last issue of inhumanoids they actually never finished adapting the original miniseries they got as far as uh metlar being freed which is about midway through and then uh sadly the uh the series the toys and the comics were all canceled so um but yeah so there's this scene where one of the um it's the first time we get a hint of the presence of Slither, which is basically Metlar's master, uh, which we find out about. Um, and he, uh, this jet fighter's uh, plane gets shot down. And we'll just take a look at some of the storybooks here. So this is very cool. Cult of the Great Protector. Love this, these painted covers on these. Um, so we get, uh, so his plane gets shot down. And it cuts to a little while later. There's some hel rescue helicopters coming in to um, uh, to find him. And one of the things they ask is, did he eject? And the guy comes back over the radio and says, negative. And I was like, oh, my God, this is it. This is the moment. This is where everything is changing. Finally, people will actually be injured after all these horrible things happen to them. Um, and then the speaking of the gag oil, the cyclopean guy who eats anything there's a scene in one of the episodes where it actually bites off decomposes arm and there's another scene where he uh so uh, like decompose literally gets his arm ripped off by gag oil and you see it and it has a transparent stomach so you you see it in his uh stomach so here you go so pretty cool we got this uh nice uh nice storybook here I don't know what the hell's going on? It's kind of like a combination comic book and storybook. Kind of interesting. There we go. Very nice. Of course, the the artwork on the interior of these storybooks was never as good as the painted covers, but you know it's perfectly serviceable. Whatever. Got kind of a Godzilla esque moment there. But uh, yeah, there you go. And then there was a second storybook. This is all they ever did. Um, I think I found these in like a dollar store at one point. I was like, oh, cool, Inhumanoid stuff, because there really wasn't a ton of merchandise for Inhumanoids because they, um, you know, they didn't uh, last very long. I mean, basically, you had two years where, uh, you know, we had the original miniseries for the first year, and then we had the, uh, the short-lived regular series for the second year. And there you go. So you get the general gist of it here, you know, typical. So there, there's the granites, kind of how they appear in here anyway. And... Uh, in the cartoon, they didn't have, like, different colored jaws like that. It was just kind of all solid rock, but uh, there you go. So this is basically just a big battle with Tendril. 
Arr. Like, tell me that isn't Cthulhu-esque, right? <laughs> like, come on. It's just totally Lovecraft for kids. Um, yes, yeah, so I was going to say, again, with the gag oil, there's, uh, there's a few gruesome scenes. Like, for example, when we first meet the gag oil, it's when they find the nest of, like, a bunch of eggs of baby gag oils. And one, uh, one hatches, and there's a few others that hatch, and then the one proceeds to eat its siblings and there is blood in this scene you see blood as it's like chowing down on its siblings and and eating them and the whole idea is the strongest most evil one will be the one that survives after it destroys all of its siblings by eating them so pretty gruesome stuff so it wouldn't surprise me if it was originally canceled due to some outrage from parents groups just at the violence um i've never been able to find any official word on that it's just kind of an assumption on my part Oh, there you go. And you actually kind of get the clean artwork on the back. Again, really cool painted artwork there. Love it. Now, of course, this being a coloring and activity book, there's, uh, you know, it's all just coloring. No, I didn't color any of the pages because, you know, collector's item and all that. But uh, here we go. Now, <laughs> it, tell it gives you some little information about the uh, various members of the Earth Corps. This one always amused me. So he has a grappling hook, right? And Herc Armstrong alias hooker <laughs> yeah in the um in the cartoon they never referred to him as hooker nor did they refer to him as hooker in the comics it's only ever been in this this coloring book so in the cartoon they only ever just called him herc that was it there was nothing of hooker and then uh what else we got yeah edward auger alias auger yeah that one's correct Jonathan Slattery, a.k.a. Liquidator, that one's correct. And Derek Bright, a alias Digger. Yeah, they never referred to him as Digger. He was only ever uh, Derek or Bright. They just referred to him as his first or last name. And uh, there you go, pretty cool. Decomposed got his badass hair thing there going on. Oh, Escape Decompose. Awesome. This is great stuff. Look at this. This is awesome. How could you be a kid and not love all this? I mean, seriously. It's amazing. Oh, yeah, and that's uh, that's the Redwoods there, by the way. They could... Uh, the, the the sort of... The, the, the comics are very much based on the toys more than the cartoon. So the Redwoods could extend like that. So that was kind of one of their big things. And they do do that in the show as well. But the thing I liked about the show was uh, it, it, it had this quality of mythology about it, sort of like these ancient mythological creatures coming to life in modern times and threatening our civilization. You know, I mean, it was, uh, it was just it had this epic quality to it, which was freaking awesome. I loved it. So there you go. I'm just going to kind of quickly flip through everything here. Pretty cool artwork here, actually, for, you know, an 80s coloring book, i got to say. And what's the, uh... oh, I see, so they do that, so you just have a plain background on the back of your puppet, so that's, that's kind of cool. Considerate of them to do that. Sun picture, yes, Decompose's big weakness was the sun, or a cursed white bird, as he would call it. So, um, if you're a fan of Transformers and G.I. Joe... The cartoon was, of course, produced by Marvel Sunbow Productions. That This is an awesome painted cover. I love this. Very cool. Um, this here is supposed to be Magnacor. Um, they had uh, Krygen and Pyre were the two guys. And they uh, one was kind of fire, one was kind of, you know, I don't want to say rock, but, you know, I, I guess you could say almost like almost water, but not really. But uh, they, they were kind of granites, but not really. They were very much... Um, all about the, the, the magnetism, uh, the, the magnetic force. One was positive, one was negative. I don't, I'm don't. i guessing negative and positive just because he was the grumpy one, he was the nice one. So <laughs> just kind of makes sense. But um, but yeah, pretty cool. So this one you're going to have a bit of deja vu here. Um, oh, the evil that lies within on the computer. That's very cool. So here we can see. This one has a little bit more of a plot to it than the... Um, than the activity book, I think, but uh, you can see, yeah, so you got, uh, yeah, see, see here, they just call him Herc Armstrong, they don't call him Hooker, I, I don't know what's up with that, I have not seen uh, seen him referred to as Hooker anywhere other than that activity book, 
Yeah, see, there's like, there's all kinds of stuff going on here. Like, they're destroying the city. We got to protect everybody. Ah! There we go. So, um, yeah, so it's unfortunate that the Inhumanoids hasn't sort of got more attention. Because, honestly, I've always felt it's one of the hidden gems of 80s cartoons. Uh, for a number of reasons. I mean, if you're a fan of things like H.P. Lovecraft, you, you got to check this show out because it's, uh, as I keep saying, it's basically Cthulhu for kids and uh, and has a lot of those same kind of elements of the ancient evil that must be stopped before it destroys us all. And, um, and it's just got a great continuing story. It goes off in some really weird directions, too. Like, what the hell? He looks really happy there. That's like the happiest looking decompose ever. Like, yep, I am very pleased with how today went. <laughs> uh. And there we go. And finally, we have paint with water. I don't know if you guys remember these, but basically, you would take, uh, you basically didn't need paint. You just need a paintbrush and some water. And you see all these little colored bits here? This is actually uh, like soluble ink, so you would you would kind of brush over it, and the color would spread to whatever. So you get all these different, uh, you know, you can see where the different colors are, and you just kind of do that. I remember I had one of these for uh, when I was a kid for the fox and the hound, and uh, I did all of the I did. I, did a whole bunch of them and i just thought it was like freaking magic when i was a kid like wow you just need water and then and then it makes color whoa that's amazing so yeah as you can see um i mean it, it probably looks <laughs> it looks here it's like wow there's all of three colors um i i do believe they blend a little bit and and you do get some more colors out of it as you as you do it i mean this wasn't exactly you know super high tech here but uh but kind of cool for what it was. And, uh, yeah, so there we go. Very nice. Let's take a look. Lots of Inhumanoids action. Oh, see, you see a lot of the... You can tell these are all published, like, at the same time, made by the same people. Cause it's a lot of the same pictures. Oh, see, that that's kind of interesting. That's all, like, black. Interesting, because uh, that's, that's Derek Bright. His suit in the cartoon was actually blue. But, um, and there you go. The Inhumanoids. Beware. <laughs> and there you go. So that's a whole lot of Inhumanoid stuff. I don't know. Let's just throw the VHS tapes on there. And be all happy. There we go. And there. Inhumanoids. Up the wazoo. Gotta love it. But, uh, yeah, I definitely recommend checking out uh, the show at some point because um, it really is a hidden gem of 80s cartoons. And um, it's just, it's, it's great stuff. I mean, there's, a, there's, there's some, uh, as I say, some content in there that was not typical for 80s cartoons, like from that era at all. And, uh, and I think it's a better show for it, just that they were daring to push that, those envelopes and, and such. It's just a shame that... Uh, you know the the audience didn't respond to it um i don't know but uh yeah so i never had any of the toys but uh it would be pretty cool to have some of them actually i mean the, the toys of the humanoids themselves are actually quite large uh if you think uh kind of like the uh, shogun warriors and godzilla toys of the late 70s they were about half the size of that. they were about a foot about maybe 14 inches tall i think the humanoids and then the action figures were your fairly standard, you know, like, uh, um, know, they're about, about three, and a, three and three quarter, four inch tall action figures, like for the Earth Core and stuff. And, uh, yeah, great stuff. in humanoids. Always been a favorite of mine. I've lost count of how many times I've watched it, and I will always love it. And there you have it. Let's, uh, let's get down. I actually really like these covers here. Very, uh, badass artwork, which I probably said at the black box, but, uh, these are badass artwork too. Very nice. Yeah, sadly, never had any of the toys, but as you know, I'm more of a media guy. I'm all about the stories and the, the lore and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, so we basically just kind of went with that angle here. Alrighty, so uh, yeah, if you ever get the chance to check out the Inhumanoids, I definitely recommend it. Um, it, it. I mean, I think it's notable in that it was 
uh, as I mentioned, a, a continuing story, which is something you didn't see very often, other than you know the obligatory five-part miniseries season premiere events that they would do typically. Um, but to have the whole series, uh, an ongoing saga like that, was was unheard of in American animation at the time. I mean, it was still, you know, Japanese, uh, the Japanese were all over that stuff since day one. I mean, pretty much all their shows were continuing sagas since the 70s. But uh, uh, but it, it wasn't as common in the States. Things were more episodic. So to have that kind of ongoing, continuing, epic, you know, saga storyline in a U.S. cartoon was, was awesome. And, uh, and, I mean, Flint Dilly just did a fantastic job. He, he really came up with a... A really fun and uh, just off the wall story that uh, I will always cherish. Alrighty, that is it for this week's closer look. Uh, that was a big one. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Quick thank you to my Patreon sponsors, especially uh, Kyle Pellegrin, my highest level sponsor. Thanks very much, dude. And uh, thanks to all of you for watching. Alright, we'll see you next time. Until then, sayonara. <laughs>